Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today I have a very special deck prepared for you all. A um, kind of an offshoot of the meta overwhelming hunger deck um, for monsters, of course, that has been created by one of my teammates. So it's not been one of my creations. I made a few slight bronze uh, card adjustments, but uh, this deck was created by Noel. You can check him out on his Twitch stream uh, right in the, co no, not the comment section, the description down below. So you'll find his link over there. So all credit goes to him. And this is the deck that we're going to be talking about today because it's called the, well, we kind of came up with the name as the Overwhelming Maiden deck. And if this lockdown is going to continue any longer and my hair gets any longer, I'm going to be known as an Overwhelming Maiden myself. Not. But, uh, yeah, the overwhelming maiden we're talking about is, of course, not such a gorgeous maiden. It's not because she's overwhelming that she's beautiful, but you'll uh, see soon enough what I'm talking about. Let's head into the deck. Because, of course, the maiden that we're talking about is the Plague Maiden. Uh, a very, very strong card that has been uh, a not-too-recent addition to the game. It was added during the Merchants of Ophir expansion. And basically has 7 power and if it's destroyed it spawns 7 rats in that row. Why do we actually use the Plague Maiden instead of something else in this deck? Because as I said it's a variation on the Overwhelming Hunger meta deck. Uh, it's because the Plague Maiden is actually lower in power than something for like for example um, Glusty would become. Um, which allows you to defend it more heavily. And the combination that we're talking about here is playing Plague Maiden and then Morphood after that. So Morphood has 6 power and boosts all allied beast units by 1. And rats are beasts. So that means that you get 7 extra points if you manage to destroy the Plague Maiden in the turn as well. So 7 extra points on top of the 6 is 13 points in one go. On top of maybe any other rats or the werecat that you might have spawned as well. Uh, for consistency, again, we add Oneromancy. Haunt is the monster scenario that allows you to spawn like a huge buttload of uh, consuming units. Which is also very important to note because the consuming units in this deck are pretty limited. Uh, most of them come from Haunt. We have three charges of Overwhelming Hunger which can, can consume as well, which you should be using for that. And then, of course, uh, there's one more all the way at the bottom. We have two Andrega Warriors to consume as well. But that's it for this deck, uh, consuming-wise. Um, but the power of this deck lies in its big point slammy combo. So we have Haunt, we have the Plague Maiden into Morvid combo that we talked about. We have the 13-point Weigern. We have, of course, after you've... Well, Weigern eventually gets destroyed or you go into the next round. You can consume it with Osrel from the ranged row, giving you another 14 points. And then the final big combo is Deathlove, Higher Vampire. Consume him twice and you get um, 15 points from this one card. So all very, very point slammy, high power plays that should allow you to gain an advantage over your opponent. But this deck is... Well, requires a specific way of playing and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to show that in the example match in a minute. But basically you want to either win round one and then push round two or if you lose round one um, and your opponent tries to push you anyway, you can push back. And then uh, you either can finish off in a short round three or if you've won the first two rounds all the better. Or, but if you go into a short round three, you can easily win with either the Plague Maiden into Morvid um, play or that love with two consumes. So that should be enough to give you the win. Let's quickly go over the remaining cards. So Cave Troll is good as a defender, seven points on that as well. Um, gives you a way to protect your scenario from Karate Heatwave. And basically just takes the hit for you. Now we have Maruna, a very powerful Dead Wish unit that allows you to seize a random enemy unit of 4 power or less when she is destroyed. Werecat is your, um, well, wide punish. So if your uh, opponent goes into swarm mode, you can easily punish that with the Werecat. Some Wild Hunt Riders to actually get some thinning in there. Uh, and then of course the Thrive Package from the Andrega Larva. And we even got a Necker here as well. Two Bruxas. And the uh, Foglets also can uh, count as a bit of tinning. So if you destroy the Foglet, 
actually pulls the copy from your deck if you haven't have it in your hand so far. Um, the only two changes that I made, the original version from Noel actually had two Bloomerts in the deck instead of the two that I have here. So I actually added Squirrel to banish Echo cards from your opponent's deck, which can be really, really powerful to take out a second on Aeromancy or something like Amphibious Assault or any of the Echo cards, basically. Um, and then the Fiend is uh, great to just have some carryover when you do go into a round two that your opponent passes on immediately. So that boosts all your dead wish units in your hand by one. And that's quite a bit of those in the deck. So that's the deck basically. Um, let's show you how you should be using this because it's a bit peculiar. And that sounds like Skellige indeed. Oh no, uh, Northern Realms. Ooh, Shield Wall. That's always a problem, but it's going to be good to actually show off what you can do with this deck. So, the main problem with this deck that you're going to see here probably is that there is no, um, there are no control options. So you don't have any direct damage dealers, which is sometimes problematic. But we actually start off with a very good hand. I'm going to get rid of the Fiend here and then maybe try and get, hmm, that's also good. Um, let's get rid of the Noon Raids. And then the second Andrega Warrior. Okay. That is an interesting starting play. So I don't have any tribe units. Um, but I do get basically all my good cards. That is an interesting way to start off. Because I don't have on Aeromancy. That's the only card I'm really missing. Um, but other than that. Looks pretty good. So I think I'm going to start off with... Um, yeah, very strongly with Vigern. Um, because that's just a 13 point play. If the armor is destroyed of Vigern, he gets destroyed himself. But right now, that's nine points to get rid of 13 points, so it's not that much of a deal. Uh, I'm actually gonna get the magic lamp activated as well, so we have some points on the field. So that's a 80 point start, and then we get, yeah, I'm guessing that's gonna be into Amphibious Assault, which is great. Because then I can use the Squirrel to get rid of that Amphibious Assault. So that's why the Squirrel was still in my hand. I was expecting an Amphibious Assault. And at least we can get rid of that. Because Shield Wall at the moment is very, very powerful. The one thing that you want to be careful with with Shield Wall is try to avoid making really, really big units. Um, so Wygern is basically as high as we're going to go. Um, and then... I should probably start with, yeah, just get rid of that immediately with Squirrel. So Squirrel, the perfect card for me, of course, because my uh, my logo is a Squirrel. But Squirrel banishes a card from your opponent's graveyard, so I banish that Amphibious Assault, so they can't use it again in the next round, which is uh, good for us. And then we got a Tridem Infantry unit, good for boosting and then getting some extra damage ticks off of that. Um, now... The interesting thing about this deck is that there's actually a lot of cards that don't really work together. So, for example, Haunt plays a lot of units, which means that your board is going to be filled up too much to actually efficiently use the Plague Maiden. Because the Plague Maiden, again, spawns seven rats on the row, so she needs that space to actually fill up that row. So what we're going to do is use Haunt in this first um, round already. We do risk getting hit by Karate Heatwave, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. If this doesn't work out, then yeah, um, we're probably going to have to pass and then push in the next round. But there we have the Haunt, immediately pushing very, very aggressively. Um, but again, it's probably the best use of the card. Do we get Karate? We don't. So that's actually really good. There's also a row being filled at the front there. Um, which is good for the Werecat, but I'm going to try and save the Werecat for the final round, because that is going to help me out. Then, next up is the Foglet. Uh, so we play the Foglet, then we get a Bargast automatically. That Bargast is going to be able to destroy the Foglet, and we get our second one in the back immediately. We don't really need to consume anything with the, um, the Raid here just yet, the Desert Banshee. So let's keep it at that for now. We're quite ahead at the moment, but I'm guessing our... I'm trying to actually bait one of the duelers out already. We get a very strong loop with Anna Stranger there. 
But the benefit that we have here is that we don't really need to use any of the overwhelming hunger charges just yet. Um, I could, of course, I could, of course, do that, but uh, it doesn't seem like I'm going to need to. Let's get the Detlov going. Um, and I think I'm just going to do that right away. So let's play the Nitrate. So ghosts and everything all over the place. And then we get Banshee on... Do I use the Bans the Bar Guests? No, I'm going to use the Banshee on Detlov. That also puts it to 12. You know what? Now that Detlov is on the field anyway, I might as well use it immediately. Like this. And then we get most of our high-powered units on the field already. And we don't really need any other consumes. So that's War Elephant. War Elephant is going to be 16 points. So that's 16 points, um, basically three on the loop in the back, and then two more from... So three, two, that's 13 points in one go. That doesn't give him advantage. So they're gonna need to play another card. Do I bleed it like that? I could bleed it like that, or... Huh. I could use Werecat now. Um, and then just use one of the charges anyway. I'm gonna use that. So Werecat over here. And then destroy all of those... Um, infantry, those volunteers in one go. And that should hopefully be enough to win me the round. Because that gives him one soldier and then he's going to have to play another one right next to the war elephant. Which means that the, uh, the boat isn't actually going to get triggered. So that saves us another two points. And we do get the done banner. And we get another shield wall out. That's actually really good. So that gives us... That's an 11 point advantage. And they only get three points automatically, which means that they need to at least do nine points to get over that. So let's just pass. So usually you want to push, but I think I've wasted enough of my high value cards. Because um, I want to keep at least the Plague Maiden and Morvood as our very final card. So that's seven points. That's not enough. Oh, of course, because the second... Yeah, okay, never mind. The second time he pa they pass, they get another uh, three points from Anna. Okay, smart. Very well played. But they did waste Donimir as well, uh, even though we, of course, wasted our only good um, control option there. But let's get rid of the Andrega Warrior and get some tribe going. I could get rid of, yeah, the Noon Raid as well. And we get the Defender, which is also very good. So that's actually bad that we got the Fiend now, but we get a pass. So it's not much, but the Fiend is going to be able to uh, give us a little bit of carryover as, yeah, we got one point from the carryover. Usually you get more, but I've wasted a lot of uh, Dead Wish units already. But we got that one extra point on the Noon rate, which is good. So now, important to note. Keep one row completely empty for the Noon Raid. Um, I think, yeah, so that's pretty good. The Noon Raid, the Plague Maiden. It's called Overwhelming Maiden, for Christ's sake. Okay, so let's get rid of the Wild Hunt Rider. We still get Maruna. So we still have, I think we do still have, right? Two, two charges, yeah. I think we still have two Overwhelming uh, Hunger Charges. And we could get rid of that one. Yeah, okay, that's another, yeah. If you didn't have it already, it's there now. Um, let's start with the classic way to start a monster round with the Andrega Larva. That's gonna give us uh, a lot of thrive over the course of this last round. We get rid of its royal guards. Um, I could grab that, that gives me six points guaranteed. There are other juicy things that I could grab if I wanted to. There's only one shield wall left there. But I'm guessing he's going to use it on um, Visokota. Hmm. You know what? Let's just grab it. Let's just grab it. So let's put Maruna over here on the back. Consume it immediately with Overwhelming Hunger. 
and get that card to our side of the field. So that's basically um, as they lose those six points. So that's 16 points in one go if you count everything. Plus the two points on the Andrega Larva. And we get Queen Adalia. Is that going to go into Archers maybe? No, the Marion Drummer. Okay, so there's a lot of an Temerian drummers there. Let's get the cave troll on the field. Although, you know what? No. Let's get the Broxa on here first. Let's put the Broxa on the front row. Put some bleeding on Nadalia. And then I could defend something, but I'm not going to. With the two points and the two armor. So you can have one unit on that field. Yeah, there's Fisikota. Okay, but he, he was going to get the shield anyway, so it's going to be too much, too high to actually grab with uh, Miruna as expected. And then I would have preferred to actually get the um, the Rat of its Royal Guard, because that was guaranteed. So let's put the Cave Troll on here right now. So that gives us that. So that means that the... Huh. It's actually interesting. So their duelers aren't going to have... Hmm, I should probably put that on the cave troll. The duelers aren't going to have shields because the shield wall ability has been drained completely. So let's do this. So the sad thing about this match is that I couldn't show you the pushing in the in round two. Um, but it is something that you should most of the time do because usually you win that first round with the amount of points I put on the field. But again, shield wall is very, very strong at the moment. And they kind of wasted their most powerful cards in one go there. Um, let's play the Noon Raid first. I'm going to play it over here. Because I'm going to grab the Rat of its Royal Guards with the Andrega Warrior in a minute. So that should give us just enough space. So then we get random ticks, but that's mostly on armor. Uh, we're armored up for half of our units, so that's really good. Then we put the Andrega Warrior over here. Just trying to focus that on one row, but still keeping enough space for the Plague Maiden in a minute. So that's that. And we're going to trigger Thrive two more times, which is really good. I'm guessing we're going to get one more Duelist before this is over. Um, although the Visagota charges are going to... Well, to all the units. Which is, in my mind, a wrong move. But now, the most important thing about this deck, the Plague Maiden. Play it on the row where you kept space, obviously. You can have one other unit there, because even with Overwhelming Hunger, you spawn another unit, but you still have seven spaces left for the rats that will be appearing. Um, so let's play Plague Maiden right now. I'm actually wondering... I should probably play Overwhelming Hunger immediately, just in case there's a Karate, because we haven't seen Karate Heatwave yet. So if there's Karate Heatwave on the opponent's hand, I don't want to lose those 7 points, so let's do the consume now. There isn't really any white punish in... Yeah, there we go. In um, Northern Realms. We do get that. But even with that, that's not that much of... Ooh, wow, we did get... We lost three, 3 rats. That was really unfortunate. Um, RNG wasn't in my favor there, but let's play more of it. That still gives us a good amount of points. I think there was still like 11 points. Uh, we didn't get any of the Thrive triggers, but that's too bad. So we get Seltkirk. So one dueler. Um, but this it's without shields. So even if the last card is... Um, yeah, the other dueler, I kind of forgot his name. We can still win this, right? So if I now put Osrael on the back row, we get that 13-point boost. And we end up at 90 points. So that's 36, 37 points our opponent needs to do. He gets four from ending of his turn. And then the Duelist is going to just destroy that. And we get Varaxis onto another Dueler. But that's not going to be... It's not going to be enough, right? Oh crap it. No, it's not gonna be enough. There we go. There we go. We beat Shield Wall with this deck. And that is exactly what I wanted to show you. Um, the only thing that we didn't really show was pushing in the second round. Um, I'm gonna do one more match to see if I can show that off. 
because uh, I still have a bit of time. Um, if that doesn't happen, we'll straight we'll go straight to the uh, the deck uh, overview again, and I'll see you guys there in a second. So my second match, as you might have noticed, uh, was a monster mirror, so I couldn't show you the push uh, tactic either there. So I'm just going to end it here with another look at the deck. So again, this deck was made by Noel. Check him out on Twitch it, with the link in the description, because um, uh, he's doing, doing some really nice streams as well. And he's really creative in his uh, deck building as well. So check him out. Um, other than that, again, this is the deck list. You can also check it out on Play Gwent. Um, leave a like there if you enjoyed it. But... Just a small overview again, so if you win round one, push round two and try to take out as much, well put down as much points as you can, because you can either win round two, that's definitely an option as well, um, or you're going to lose and then keep something like Detlof or Plague Maiden with uh, Morvood as your final play and you should win regardless. Um, other than that, there's another a lot of tribe that you can start with, as you saw with the Andrega Larva and then the Bruxa, and then every time go a little bit higher in your units um, to just get those high tempo plays and just outplay your opponent. Um, the only problem with this deck, again, is the lack of removal, but because of the amount of points you generate, you usually overcome that, as you saw with the Shield Wall match we just demonstrated. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gwentage. If you really, really liked it, don't forget to leave a like. There's a lot of other deck guides on this channel, so check them out if you're interested. And uh, well, thank you enormously for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye.